I've actually had this idea for a while now. When I'm live streaming, why do my widgets, like my labels bar, uh, my chat, I would have my donation goal here, uh, my alerts up there, why should they all be flat? That's what everyone has. Maybe I could have them in 3D space, like integrated into my background. Now, of course, this is an effect that would be very particular if you do have a background. Like if you use a green screen, this might be actually easier for you. But in my case, I don't want my chat to be flat anymore. Maybe I want it on this door as if it was integrated into my apartment. I actually found multiple ways to accomplish this specific effect. And what I'm gonna demonstrate in this video is what I believe is the easiest way to accomplish that. We'll be doing it in OBS Studio using one extra plugin and uh, yeah, we'll jump right into it right after a message from our sponsor. And today's sponsor is Owned Pro, a service that is made to work with OBS Studio. The goal here is to give you everything you need as a live streamer. Owned Pro gives you access to the largest overlay pack library. And on top of that, those overlay packs are available in multiple languages. The overlay packs are one click install and Own Pro is compatible with Twitch, YouTube and Facebook gaming. If you already tried Odin Pro and you're having issues with OBS 28, make sure you log into your dashboard and check out the instructions right here. And if you haven't tried it yet, make sure you check it out at owned.gg slash pro. That is own3d.gg slash pro. Also, use code Gale to get 50% off at checkout. Oh, hi, we're back. So the one plugin we're actually gonna use is one that I already talked about, it's StreamFX. I made this video on how to install it, but seven days ago, the people at StreamFX actually commented on that video saying, hey, just updating you that the installation method has changed. We now support system-wide and user-only installation, both of which no longer install into OBS Studio directory. It should now be significantly easier to install StreamFX. But if you don't know what it is, it's basically a plugin that adds a bunch of additional source filters. Watch my previous videos to learn about all the filters that it adds. In this video, we're just gonna be using one or two. I will of course put a link in the description so that you can download and install it yourself. We open up OBS Studio and this is supposed to be in what we call your just chatting scene where your camera is basically full screen. So let's create this scene. Under source, I'm gonna click on the plus and go find video capture device. That's gonna be my camera. And here it is. I'm gonna click okay. And one of the things that we're gonna think of in advance is where are we going to put our widgets? They're gonna be in 3D space. They have to be in the room they need space to be in the room you don't want to just put them floating in the air right so camera placement is going to be something very important in this specific case i'm going to turn my camera a little bit so i can get more of that door right there this would be a good camera placement it's also important to place it in a way that you're not going to interfere what are the odds of me doing this during stream uh, they're very low you know i'm going to speak like this and most likely i'm not going to really interact with this. I also feel like I can utilize the space where this neon sign is, so I'm gonna take it down just for this video. And then from there, you can add all the widgets, images, videos to your scene. For example, I already have my labels bar created in Stream Elements as a browser source. I can just copy the URL and then come back to OBS, click add, go to browser, name it labels, click OK, paste the link, and play around with the size until it fits. I'm not sure of the size, so I'm just gonna come here, click on that background image, and see that it's 1436 by 62. So I can put 1436 by 62. Press OK. So this is something that I would place in the middle somewhere like that. Very flat or something like that. And we're going to try to actually put it maybe on top of my light there. Maybe that would work. I'm going to go ahead and place it like this. Maybe scale it down just a little bit. Now I'm going to right click on it. Click filters. Click the plus to add a new filter. And we're going to find 3D transform. Click OK. And there's multiple modes. There's orthographic, there's perspective, uh, and then there's corner pin. Corner pin is basically you're gonna drag the corners until it looks like it belongs there. And I believe it's one of the best ways of doing it. So you can basically play around with all of those settings. Those are each corner pins, basically. So top left is gonna be this, right? You can move it on the X axis or the Y axis up and down. Now in our case, we will notice that if you drag this, it doesn't go out of the boundaries, right? So having the web browser size be bigger might be in our advantage. Well, let's go back, double click on the labels and at the bottom instead of 62, let's put the 600 that we had. Go back to filters and 3D transform. And on the top right pin, I'm gonna drag the Y axis until I feel like it matches roughly the perspective of my room. Okay, that's not too bad. And I can always go in and you know, drag like this 
Now we definitely run into the issue of visibility. In this case, I would probably redesign this whole labels bar to have maybe only two labels just so I can have the text be way bigger. Or I would just place it somewhere else that is uh, flatter with less perspective. But you kind of get the idea. And now we're basically going to be placing more stuff. Another idea would be to combine this effect with some masks so that you can place stuff behind other stuff, make it more immersive, make it really look like it's in the room. But let's continue for now. I think one extra thing that we can add to make it blend in a little bit is transparency. Like the labels bar kind of matches because it's so transparent. Let's see if we can get a similar effect here. I'm gonna click on plus and there's transparency on multiple effects. Color correction is one of them. So I'm just gonna add color correction and I'm gonna go to opacity. There you go. In my case, I'm using a camera that makes my background more blurry, so I'm getting bokeh. I could add a blur effect because that's one of the effects that stream effects brings to make it really blend in, but I don't want to sacrifice uh, clarity for it. So I'm going to keep it that way. So for the widgets that are transparent, uh, like your chat box, for example, until someone types something, what you can do is select set chat box and under stream elements here, you're going to see background color and we're just going to change that to an opaque color that way when we place it in our scene we'll see what we're working with and you can see that's what it looks like so what i'm doing for each source is i'm giving more space when it comes to the size for example this is a 300 by 600 chat and what i put here in order to have this space is 400 by 800 so i know when i skew it basically i'm gonna need some spot at the bottom and some spot maybe on the right same thing 3d transform play around with it pick a spot and you're gucci For example, in this case, you would probably want to mask out the PC case, but I like to imagine that this is like more aesthetic. So I wouldn't mind the fact that we don't see the chat. In all honesty, I would probably have the chat be the whole door. I actually have no idea if adding a mask would work in this situation, but you get to see me try it right in front of you. So what I would do is use a screenshot to get the accurate size ish. I would go to view full screen and I'm going to press uh, windows key shift and S to bring up my snipping tool and basically kind of trace around this rectangle. All right, that is copied into my clipboard. I can either open up Photoshop or Photopea to create the mask. In order to avoid the I don't have Photoshop comments, we're gonna use Photopea, new project, and it's probably gonna already have the dimensions that are in your clipboard. You can see here, I click create and boom, would you know it? If I press control V, boom, I will have this and I can use the pen tool in order to mask everything out. Control plus to zoom in. I'm gonna make sure that my pen tool is creating a path and not a shape. I'm gonna do this. I'm just clicking, just clicking. Look a little bit outside here, outside there, and I'm gonna finish my mask. I'm gonna right click, make a selection. I'm gonna create a new layer. And with the paint bucket tool here, I'm going to fill it with white. When creating masks like that, most of the time, white reveals black hides. I'm gonna click once more, right? And since black hides, I'm going to pick the background and I'm gonna control, I press control D to deselect. I'm gonna press Control I to invert it. So black hides, white reveals. I actually want the opposite. I just realized that. So let me <laughs> do the opposite. I'm going to Control I on our mask to invert the color. And now I can save this. Save as PNG. And we're gonna call it mask. Okay, now it's time to test our uh, theory. I'm gonna right click, go to filters on that chat. I'm going to click plus and find image mask blend. Click okay. I'm going to go ahead and click browse and go find that mask that we created. And uh, it works. <laughs> what? It actually works perfectly. That's great. And as you can see, it cuts out. It's, it's not like totally perfect. We can probably move this to get away with more. If I click on it and I press the arrows on my keyboard, maybe down a little bit. There you go. But technically, if I type something in chat, I'm going to ask 8ball if this video is going to do well. Will this video do well better not tell you now that's the life of a youtuber <laughs> so as you can see my chat is here of course the background is not the right one so we can go back and uh, get rid of that 
And I would probably want my text to be black since my door is a bright color. Okay, cool. Now I have to type all of that again. All right, and here it is. You can see it's kind of like, uh, it's hard to read probably because we added that color correction opacity thing and we can play around with that, of course. Boom, if you want it to be more visible or less visible. You can also play with the contrast if you want the names to pop a lot, just like that. I think that's pretty cool. I think that looks decent and it doesn't just, it doesn't necessarily like jump in your eyes like, oh wow, there's graphics. It really feels kind of part of the, the environment in a way. Now this spot where my neon sign is, is where I would probably put some alerts. So every time someone would follow or, or anything like that, it would show up here. Let's try to do that. Now the alerts don't necessarily have options for the background, so we can actually use the chat box to, um, to gauge where our alert is going to be. So under stream tools, your streams chat, and I just need to match the size of my alert box, which is 800 by 700. Position size, okay, 800 by 700. There you go. In the layers, I'm gonna put it underneath so that we can still see the alerts. And if, for example, I test an alert under emulate, This is what my alert would look like. Let me click save, copy the link and put that in OBS. So remember the whole thing about the size, we know this is 800 by 700. So we're gonna give it more just so that we can distort it. I'm gonna go 1000 by 900. All right, I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and do the same things. And we can even do the same technique of masking since we know it works now. I'm gonna add a little bit of blur this time to make it potentially blend a little bit better. 0.5, there we go. Right click, filters, image blend, mask. Find the mask. There it is, okay. I'll go back to the alerts, turn off the fake chat, save. All right, so far so good. And we're gonna emulate uh, an event. Let's go subscriber event. There you go. Now, of course, with my light behind it, it's not perfect. Um, but the fact that it's super sharp against the blurry background makes it look a little bit weird. And uh, as I promised, we can add a little bit of blur. Filters plus blur. Okay, that is also part of uh, stream effects, I believe. You can put Gaussian and then play around with the size of the blur. Test again. Okay, it looks more part of the background when it's blurry, but uh, five might be a little too much. Of course, you run into the issue of uh, the text not being as readable, so you gotta find the perfect balance or make your text way bigger. We can read follower very clearly. You can just make it so that it only shows the name of the person so that the text is big enough to be readable. For the chat, what I would do is probably make the text bold so it's even more um, visible. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the result and of course with color correction we can make it brighter we can make it more opaque also play around with the order also play around with the order of the effects for example blur being at the end might not be the best thing so you can go bottom here and put the blur maybe before the transform i love how absolutely nothing goes where the mask is But there you go. This is the concept that I came up with. And obviously you would want to spend way more time on it, create specific graphics for it so that it looks a little bit better. But um, I think this is not bad. I wonder what it would look like with my lights on. Turn on shelves. Not bad. So as I mentioned before, if you want to learn about all of the filters that StreamFX provides you, you can go check out this video right here. So go out there, make me proud, get level, out.